Today we will discuss the future of brachycephalic dog breeds. So first, what is brachycephalic? So it comes from Greek, which means short and head. So to make it very easy, a short snout, so to say. And examples of thereof will be a French Bulldog, Turk, Boxer, English Bulldog, Boston Terrier, but also uh, dogs like uh, Laza Abso, Pekingese, those guys. And the thing is, in the past they were uh, bred a lot and exaggerated each generation, but nowadays people are waking up and saying, okay, there are so many uh, drawbacks with this that we don't, do not want this anymore. Now what could be the drawbacks? This brassy's cephalic uh, snout comes with breathing problems, also often problems for space of eyes and sometimes even brains. So that's uh, not something that they like. And if they have breathing problems, of course, their athletic ability and their hearts will have a hard time. But other, <coughs> other factors are also there. It's very hard to uh, to have the uh, pups born in a natural way, oftentimes even impossible, and they use cesarean section to deal with this. Some breeds are even that uh, unathletic that they are not even able to mate in a natural way. Okay, that being said, what is the solution? They now use different breeds with longer snouts to revigorate the brachycephalic uh, dog breeds and what will be the result of that? Of course the first result would be for the brachycephalic dog breeds to get a little bit of more of a normal snout so a longer snout like this dog has introduced to a brachycephalic breed will give you uh, yeah, something in between of course but then, what they do, normally they breed only one generation, yeah, which would be, would be 50% F1, and then they breed till the F2, 25%, the F3, 12.5%, and then F4, 6.25%. And that's often enough to get to the uh, easy rules that they now have for brachycephalic uh, breeds. So those rules were increased in the amount of snout length compared to the skull length in time, but now this would be suitable again. And it's still very little added capability. The other thing is, it's not only the snout length, but the snout length can exist because those dogs were just there for uh, being a companion dog with no functionality or very limited functionality. So also other parts of the dogs will be revigorated by a, a longer snout length, of course, but also all the other benefits <laughs> of a more athletic breed. For example, a working dog like a petardale will really help. So the benefits of the brachycephalic uh, breeds are many. However, Sometimes they use blood that has a completely different character. For example, the pug, they uh, breed in beetle, beagle blood to make uh, yeah, the puggle, so to say. And the beagle has a completely different character than the, the pug. It would be far wiser to use a dog like a Staffordshire Blue Terrier or even better, a Petidol Terrier, because a Petidol Terrier is work bred and also um, it's more the size. I would never, never ever recommend using a good dog, for example a Petidol Terrier as a bitch, to a pug or something like that, because you would further destroy uh, a good breed, whereas if you just use him as a sire, Sire can sire a lot of bitches, whereas the bitch can only receive 
uh, insemination by a limited amount of science. And that's also bringing me to the next point. Of course, you will improve the yeah, handicapped breed, but you can also destroy a healthy breed, a yeah, working breed. So therefore, as I mentioned, only use semen, only use sires instead of uh, the other way around. Otherwise, you will dilute the working breed and you will be left with nothing because everything will be more the same, but nothing will be good. <coughs> and uh, that brings me to the future. <coughs> Why would you use um, deformed dogs to start with? They were just pet dogs, they have no functionality left. And for example, if you were looking for bulldogs, for example, English bulldogs, you now see the old English bulldog or the leave bulldogs. And they are all a lot better than the original English bulldog. But then you can also look at those uh, descendants that closely resemble the original working English bulldog, which would be an American Pit Bull Terrier or a working Bull and Terrier. Yeah? For example, Irish Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And that would be a far better starting point, in my opinion. That being said, it is something that people like. And what do they like about the brachycephalic uh, breeds? They have a human-like appearance. And uh, because their face is so flat, it resembles a little bit that of a human. Also, the eyes are often bulging out, which also makes them very big. To be frankly, also a lot of people like it that a dog doesn't need that much of exercise or gets tired easily or cannot deal with it so that they know they have to deal with it. So weak people seek weak dogs, whereas strong people seek strong dogs. That's my uh, opinion. I hope you like this video. If you do, let me know. If you don't, let me know as well. Have a great day. Bye bye.